as the uh, largest and most important city in the first century world. Located about uh, 15 uh, uh, miles from the uh, Mediterranean Sea, Rome was a uh, teeming uh, metropolis. In 1941, as uh, inscription was uh, disco an inscription was discovered at Asta, O S T I A, uh, which indicated that in uh, AD 14 the city had a population of 4.1 uh, million. Uh, it is uh, possible, to, it is impossible to determine uh, with uh, great certainty uh, who founded the uh, church of uh, the great me um, metropolis. Uh, there are, however, several uh, uh, <coughs> contenders for this uh, honor who can be uh, eliminated. First is the evidence that uh, Paul did not establish the Roman church. Uh, Romans... Okay. Uh, uh, Romans uh, 1, uh, 10 and 11, 13, verses 13, uh, 10, 11, 13, 15, uh, all make uh, references to the fact that Paul had never been to Rome at the uh, writing of uh, this epistle. Uh, this obviously could not have uh, founded the, uh, so he obviously could not have owned the church there. Second Peter must be ruled out also, ruled out as well. Uh, you know, Catholics don't like hearing that. The Catholics make a great example for my class also. Um, he was, you know, Paul, uh, Paul never read it at the end of the book. <laughs> and if he was the first Paul, Is it better? okay, you would think, you would think not only would he greet him, he would greet him first. Century, the okay. side of it was uh, when, side. See, and they get that because, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Peter, uh, yeah, uh, Paul, yeah, Peter, Peter said he was going to go to Babylon. Well, it really meant Babylon. It didn't mean Rome as a uh, symbolic uh, word. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so it's, and they always say, it's, you know, by tradition, and we believe this, you know, and since when does tradition mean anything? Okay. God said, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, to uh, watch out for the traditions of men, and unfortunately that goes, that goes on in most every denomination, by the way. Uh, we, we, we do our best to avoid that here. Uh, uh, we look, you know, we, we stick, we do our best to stick to the facts, and uh, being uh, ultra-fundamental, you also want to try to avoid being uh, 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 legalistic and judgmental. Those are the problems we fundamentalists can have, rather than just kind of tossing out whatever we don't want to, like, like most of the other denominations do. Uh, the view of the present Roman church, uh, which uh, admittedly uh, holds to uh, uh, Peter and uh, foundation of the uh, church in, in Rome, is based on erroneous uh, statements of uh, uh, Eusebius, uh, in his uh, Ecclesiastical uh, History, uh, book number 2, chapter 14. Uh, this church historian inaccurately recorded that uh, Peter went to Rome during the second year of the reign of the Roman Empire, uh, Claudius, uh, to uh, encounter the uh, imposter uh, Simon uh, Magnus, uh, the sorcerer who uh, tried to uh, buy the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's referenced in Acts uh, 8. Uh, the second year of the reign of uh, Claudius, uh, uh, would have been uh, 40, A.D. 42. However, Peter was a pillar of the church in Jerusalem, uh, not uh, Rome. Uh, when you go to Acts 15, where uh, 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 Paul and Barnabas had come back to ask them, what should we do about circumcision? And they had the council, and that was uh, A.D. 50, 51 time frame. So it's already after, you know, long after 42. All right? Oh, gee, you're, you're early. I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he probably gets here about 5'2". Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and he wasn't even the head of the church. You know, he, you know, uh, you know they ask him what, what they should do, and, uh, you know, when you read it, uh, Peter says, well, I think, I don't, you know, I think we ought to, you know, not, you know, impose it upon him. James, the oldest half-brother of Jesus, stood up and said, we are not going to. He was the head of the church. You know, and he gave him four things in uh, verses 20 and 29, uh, you know, they, they weren't to do. You know, eat meat, sacrifice idols, uh, consume blood, uh, fornication, and, you know, and, and circumcision. Okay, and, and, you know, all four, you know, and he listed them again in, in 29, so you have, you know, two entries on it. Uh, but uh, uh, the things they do, the things they do with Peter, and then, you know, and, and then people make jokes, and, you know, you know and make their statements, you know, St. Peter's the one's going to let you into heaven. He's not going to let me into heaven. <laughs> he is, you know, he's lucky to be there himself, just like I am. <laughs> um, you know, especially as impetuous as he was. Uh, you know, just, just one end of the spectrum to the other, back and forth. 
uh, he is uh, frequently mentioned as uh, being active in uh, Jerusalem, Acts chapter 9. He was uh, certainly uh, in Jerusalem uh, up until and through the uh, Council of Jerusalem, Jerusalem in Acts 15. Since the Council of Jerusalem can be uh, dated at uh, 49, this is 49, uh, some people go, you know, usually say 50, 51. You know, my, my Bible says 50. Because um, my Bible has dates when things were written and what they were, they were referring to, which is really nice. Uh, besides, in the, uh, besides, in the uh, salutation of the last chapter of Romans, Paul salutes 27 individuals by name. If Peter had was uh, bishop of the church by that time, uh, why did uh, Paul not mention his name as well? Also, uh, Luke has been uh, demonstrated to be the most accurate historian of the first century. You know, you remember that uh, you know, he, he, went, he went to make an, an orderly um, uh, 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 timetable, what Jesus did. You know, the, longest verse, the longest sentence in the Bible is uh, uh, Luke 1, uh, verses uh, 1 to 4. You know, something like 63, 64 words long. It's all one sentence. Okay? And it says, you know, he says he's, he's making an orderly... Uh, um, uh, uh, a history of what Jesus did and when he did it, uh, and then and then obviously uh, you know uh, Acts is uh, basically Luke two, uh, the early church and uh, and what happened, um, and Peter as as uh, prominent as he was uh, had uh, founded the church at, at Rome. How could uh, Luke have uh, overlooked such an important fact in uh, recording the history of the early church in, in Acts? In addition, uh, in uh, Romans 15, 20, uh, Paul writes, Yes, so have I uh, strived to uh, preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should uh, build upon another man's foundation. If Peter had founded the uh, church at Rome, why was Peter so uh, uh, anxious to uh, preach there? Romans 1, 15. Uh, these uh, <coughs> considerations would uh, make it uh, appear impossible that Peter established the church in Rome. Uh, if, uh, do I live? Yes. Okay. You know, you know, to die is gain. Who? To die is gain. Oh, true. I ain't dying yet. You first pass it down. No gain. Uh, if another uh, Paul, if, if, if neither Paul nor Peter established a church, uh, then who did? Two possibilities exist. The first arises from those uh, present at the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. Uh, 9 to 11, mentioned that uh, among these in Jerusalem on the uh, event of the day, uh, strangers from Rome, uh, Jews, and proselytes. Uh, it is uh, quite possible that believer, believing Jews carried their new faith and the message of the gospel back to the uh, uh, imperial city and founded the church there. Another possibility is that uh, families from uh, Pauline churches uh, in the east uh, settled <clears throat> in Rome and uh, discovered the uh, faith of each in, 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 in Rome, discovering the faith of each other, gathering together to worship uh, independently of the uh, Roman synagogues. Uh, either way, the church at Rome apparently uh, owed its uh, origin to the uh, migration of Christians from the uh, eastern part of the uh, empire who were uh, converted through their uh, contacts with the uh, uh, gospel there, and most likely with uh, with with uh, uh, Paul being the one that was taken the missionary journeys where the other 11 stayed in Jerusalem, most likely they came from, from Paul uh, and had nothing to do with Peter. Uh, it is generally accepted that when uh, Paul wrote Romans, there was a, a church of considerable size at Rome. The uh, contenders of this uh, epistle make it uh, evident that the Roman church was uh, comprised of both Jews and Gentiles. Remember in uh, Romans 1.16? Uh, you know, Paul, Paul wrote uh, 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 first to the Jew and then to the Greek. Okay, they they all the you know he always went to these to the synagogues first. You see in Acts where they where they you know and where they went into the synagogue uh, on uh, uh, on the Sabbath. But it never says they went there to worship. It always says they went there to evangelize them. They waited until a proper time, and then they told them about Jesus. It does not establish what the Sabbatarians today say, that uh, they were to continue worshiping on the last day of the week. When God says he wants the first of everything we have, the first fruits, 
uh, we, when we give him the first of our time, then he can bless the rest of the week. And when I say the Sabbatarians, you know, when you when you worship on uh, when you worship on quote unquote the Sabbath, the last day of the week, uh, how much time is left between the time you get out and, and sundown for God to bless you for the rest of the week? Uh, you know, and then there's all kinds of proof that everything got converted from the first day to the uh, you know from the seventh day uh, to the first day of the week. Uh, you know, when, when uh, you know, we just did Revelation, uh, when you have, what is it, Revelation 110, uh, where it says that uh, 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 John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. If that was, if that was actually the Sabbath, he would have said the Sabbath. You know, when you, in uh, 1 Corinthians 16.1, where he says, take a collection on the, uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the first day of the week. They didn't meet on the Sabbath and then come back the next day just to take, a, just to take a, an offering. They were already there taking an offering. Uh, the day of Pentecost, God set it up for the first day. When you go back and read, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Leviticus 23, uh, we have the uh, day of Pentecost. It says it's seven Sabbaths plus the next day after Passover. So God had already started to set things up to go on the first day of the week. You have, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 17, or 2 Corinthians 6, 17, come out from among them, be ye separate. You know, when the Jews worship on Saturday, I'm not, what we call Saturday, when the Muslims worship on Friday, when the ungodly don't worship at all, when we're worshiping on the first day of the week, haven't we come out from all of them? And aren't we being separate? There's just all kinds of proofs. You know, the uh, day of Pentecost, you know, they did, they did the witnessing, they did the baptisms, they did the communions. Uh, when uh, <clears throat> when uh, Peter, uh, I mean, when Paul, in Acts chapter 20, uh, forgot where he went, the city, you know, you, you look it up. He's there for over a week. He intentionally goes beyond, beyond the, the Sabbath, Saturday, and he's preaching on the first day of the week. That's when the guy falls from the, uh, from the ceiling and he brings him back to life again. He did that on the first day of the week. He intentionally had gone beyond the Sabbath, beyond the Sabbath. Okay, so just everything we're to do as Christians ought to have got changed into the first day of the week. Uh, and the Sabbatarians just never look at any of the any of the proofs, uh, you know. And the first, of course, uh, Colossians two sixteen says, "Don't judge anybody on their on their, on their on their holy days." So you know, I keep trying to get the uh, the idiot that they have on uh, World Net Daily, um, uh, Reeves, Richard Reeves, the father. He rails on us just constantly. Uh, for not living up to the fourth commandment, you know, keep the Sabbath holy. Well, the tenth commandments were given to the Jews. They were not. They were not given to us. But nine of the ten, only the fourth commandment, is not repeated in the New Testament. So we are to follow the rather nine. But, Go ahead. But World Net Daily, the founder of it. The what? The founder of World Net Daily. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, Pharaoh. Joseph, Joseph Pharaoh. Is that Hebrew uh, roots? Yes. He yes. Was yes. Found, yes. So that's why. Yeah. It's, it's, and that's probably. And that's you why. You need to know when you're on that site. Yeah. You know that that's right. what, what their background is. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, his son David Reeves doing the uh, doing the creation stuff really does a great job. Okay. Um, uh, but you know, it's you know, I even I even started writing in there. Now he li he looks at what people write, and but he totally ignores it. I made a comment that this is like this is like uh, you know being dispensational, like we are here. There are certain things from one dispensation to another that follow through that we're to follow, but certain things got changed. That's why we're not sacrificing animals. Okay, God changed that. Okay, among and he says you can, you can eat. You, you, you're not you're not uh, you're not bound by the dietary law anymore. See if they did that in Acts chapter ten with uh, Paul, I mean Peter. And when Peter went to Cornelius, he you know he was making a trip from a long distance. It took all day. He was going to spend all night. He was going to feed him, and it was going to be things that were unclean. If God did not change that, us Gentiles may not be saved because he would have rejected it. Okay, so there's there's just all kinds of biblical proofs and biblical reasons. Uh, why things are uh, uh, different uh, now? Uh, you know, you know, it's now a free gift. We, you know, and God did, did all the animal sacrifices. You know, the six hundred thirteen from the six hundred thirteen laws to show people that uh, they could not live up to the law and why they needed a savior. So uh, things things did change. And where was I? Um, you know, we have, you know, Paul doing this. Okay. Uh, the contention of this uh, epistle uh, makes it uh, evident that the uh, Roman Church was comprised of both Jews and Gentiles. And that's where I left off. There was a, a Jewish community in Rome as early as the uh, second century B.C. It was uh, greatly enlarged by uh, 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 Papai. 
uh, Pompeii, not Pompeii, conquerors, uh, conquest of uh, Judea, Judea, Judea. I'm not in a good, good frame of mind on the words today. Uh, Pompeii uh, conquest of uh, Judea, Judea uh, in 63 B.C. when uh, uh, Jewish uh, prisoners of war uh, marched in the uh, in his great uh, procession. Uh, uh, Cyril uh, making yeah yeah uh, make, uh, makes makes reference to the uh, size and influence of the Jewish colony in Rome in 59 B.C. In uh, A.D. 19, the Jews of uh, Rome were expelled from the city by a decree of uh, Emperor uh, Tiberius. Another mass uh, explosion uh, took place in the uh, region of Emperor uh, Claudius uh, between 41, A.D. 41 and 54. This explosion caused uh, Aquila and Priscilla to uh, migrate to uh, Corinth where they uh, encountered Paul. And God, of course, God had a purpose for them, didn't he? See, you know, we're all, you know, uh, they were an evangelistic uh, couple. Uh, this is where women are to be in. Yeah, within the church, we know that the men are supposed to stand up and be leaders. But out there in the uh, in the world, we're all supposed to be evangelists. To everybody that they go that, that we run into. Um, but the efforts of this uh, explosion uh, explosion order uh, were temporary. For less than uh, three years after the death of, of uh, Claudius. Paul wrote that the uh, Jewish Christians in Rome, speaking in their uh, faith as a, a matter of uh, common knowledge, the uh, original uh, nucleus of the uh, church must have been Jewish. However, the Gentile element in the Roman church was uh, predominant at the time of the writing. Even though Paul addressed the uh, Jews in, uh, uh, I assume it's, you know, in Romans 4.1, that's what we have, just says 4.1, when uh, he spoke uh, of uh, Abraham as uh, our father, as uh, pertaining uh, to the flesh. Remember, we as Gentiles have been grafted in for salvation. So uh, uh, Abraham becomes a stepfather, so to speak, for us. Um, but, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, Abraham was not a Jew. He's the father of the Jews. He's not a Jew. Because if he was a Jew, then... Uh, so is, uh, um, uh, who's, uh, who's the father of the, uh, the Arabs? Um, Ishmael. What? Ishmael. The, yeah, the other, the other son. Yeah, no, no. Uh, Ishmael. 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 With Hagar. Also, um, you are Jewish by your mother. That's why Jesus was a Jew, because he didn't have an earthly father. Okay? So, uh, um, if, if, if he was a Jew... Um, you know, then, then the whole line of, to, to some degree, the whole line of the Arabs are Jewish also. Yes. Okay, so Abraham wasn't a Jew. His Bible says he was the father of the Jews. Okay. Father how Abraham. Did, okay, so how did the, the Jews come to be? I mean, was it... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promise was through Isaac. Okay, so being Jewish isn't necessarily what we think it is. It's more of a promise from God. Well, it's a promise as well as a people that came from him. Uh, as the sands of the sea. Remember the sands of the sea were the Jews and the water is the Gentiles when we were doing the, uh, the end time prophecy class to try to understand who, who we were talking about when, uh, with the symbolism. I see. You know, so, and when, when, we, when we did three years, you know, three years on end time prophecy. Because I know that there's a lot of Jewish people that I know that consider themselves like a separate race. Well, yeah, there, yeah, a separate race within, within the, within the Shemites. Yeah. Okay. See, the, the, the Arabs and the, and the Jews are all Shemites. Okay. Where, uh, um, uh, you know, the, uh, we, we come from uh, Japheth. So they're right. actually they're, they're brothers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's a thirty-five hundred year old family feud that's going yeah, on over there. <laughs> <laughs> they're the stepbrothers. Yes, so to speak. Um, you know, it's a thirty-five hundred year old feud over the, over the birthright. And uh, that's, you know, the Jews have 0.16% of the, all the Arab land, and the Arabs are not happy. They've got to have that other 0.16%, okay? When in reality, back then, um, when the, the history was that the firstborn son would get, uh, would get two-thirds, and any other subsequent children would get, you know, we, excuse me, get two parts, and any other subsequent children would get one part. So the first son would have a double portion. That's part of why 
uh, Dan is not listed in Revelation uh, 7 as one of the 12 tribes when God said that Joseph was going to get a double portion. Manassas, his firstborn son, is listed to give him the double portion. Now, you know, Dan kind of kind of went off the went off the trail when you when you read uh, you know the uh, uh, my end time prophecy uh, stuff. You know, I got inf information in there. So, possible reasons why he was gone. They intermarried and kind of, and some went to Europe. They you know, you know well, there's there's there's, there's two uh, um, two uh, best guesses. They intermarried uh, with those in Europe, so they. they they, they polluted themselves and went away. Others say they went to uh, uh, they went to Africa, you know, over to Africa, and intermarried there. And so they kind of they you know they 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 went away because of that. They did not have a pure uh, race anymore, a pure sub you know tribe, a pure tribe anymore. Uh, you know, the Jews I run into all know what tribe they're from. Okay, um, you know, we don't. I don't. I never heard anybody say they were from Dan. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you know, referring to Abraham as our father uh, as pertaining to the flesh. There are many uh, direct uh, references to the Gentiles. In this uh, introduction, Paul speaks of the obedience uh, to the uh, faith among all nations in uh, Romans 1 5. Paul uh, uh, desires fruit among the Romans, even as among other Gentiles in uh, 1 13. After he reviewed uh, God's uh, dealing with uh, uh, Israel in uh, uh, chapters 9 through 11, it is uh, to the Gentiles that Paul gives uh, concluding uh, admonition in uh, 11, chapter 11, verse 13. Later, when he wrote to the uh, Philippians uh, from Rome, Paul uh, uh, intimated uh, that it was among the Gentiles that the gospel had chiefly taken hold in Rome. Now, okay, and you know, that's uh, Philippians 1. 13 and uh, 413. Why, for those of you that are in the end time prophecy class, why did it take hold with mainly the Gentiles and not the Jews? You guys ought to know this. Come on. How many times did I reference it? Well, the Jews are stiff necked people. Well, they, yeah, they, well, they've always been stiff-necked people, yeah. you know, about 25, 30 times, you know, a bunch of times in the Old Testament it says they were stiff-necked people. And it was prophesied that that was going to happen. Um, when did it occur? What did the Jews say? Oh, let his blood be enough. There you go. One person listened. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't give a time period. Let his blood be on us and on our children. They didn't give a time period, so God got to decide. He did that in Hosea 6, 1 to 3. He said, after two days, and a day to God is a thousand years, I will come to, you know, come to you in the third day. We're now in that third day, and that's why we're close to the end of the, uh, um, a, the, end of the age of grace. Uh, so that's why it took hold with the Gentiles. It was now our time. Praise God. Otherwise, we'd all be on our way to hell, uh, just like most of the world is. And America's gone down the tubes real quick. Yep. Come out to the abortion clinics and see how fast the world's gone down to, you know, Gone down. You know, you go out there. You know, uh, you remember five, six years ago, was it was as bad as it is now? Now I don't know about New York, okay, but you know, it wasn't as bad as it is now. You know, they, they just they just don't care. Um, uh, later, when uh, um, when he wrote to the uh, Philippians from Rome, uh, Paul. Yeah, okay, I did that. Um, the church which has uh, begun in uh, the Jewish hearts had taken on a uh, directly uh, Gentile tone. Place of writing. The content of the epistle to the uh, Romans indicates that it was written from uh, Corinth uh, on Paul's third missionary journey. Uh, the events of this epistle uh, fit perfectly into the chronolog uh, chronology of Acts uh, 20, verses 1 to 5. Paul, uh, Paul's eastern journey were uh, over. His uh, face was uh, set towards the uh, west. Uh, it's referenced in Romans uh, 15, 23 to 24, Acts 19, uh, 21. Uh, at the at this time, Paul was uh, headed to the to Jerusalem with the collection uh, for the poor. Romans 15, 24 to 27. Uh, this he did at the uh, close of his uh, uh, third month, uh, vi three month uh, visit to uh, Corinth. Uh, that's referenced in Acts 24, 17. Um, this uh, collection was uh, emphasized in the epistle to the uh, Corinthians. Uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 to 4. 2 Corinthians uh, 8. 
verse 9. Uh, Romans uh, must have been uh, written about the same time as the uh, Corinthian epistle, but a, a bit later when he, uh, wrote the, when he wrote the epistle, Paul mentioned that, uh, uh, that with him were uh, uh, Timothy, uh, Gaius, you know, a, you know, a bunch of names. You know, I'm terrible on names, I'm not saying them. Uh, Timothy and two of the others, uh, and uh, Gaius, were, uh, uh, were all uh, mentioned as being with Paul in uh, Corinth uh, during the uh, thir three month visit in Acts 24. Uh, he cross referenced, uh, uh, by cross referencing, well, we know that uh, those uh, uh, mentioned in, Rome's, in Romans were the uh, same men who were uh, with Paul in uh, Corinth. And it was from uh, there that uh, he wrote the uh, epistle to the uh, Romans. Now, most, people, most Christians think Romans was written from Rome. It wasn't. <laughs> And we know it wasn't because he said greet all the people there. So you know he couldn't he couldn't you know he could have greeted himself if he was if he was actually there. Uh, date of writing it is it is possible to pinpoint the date of writing even further than uh, simply Paul's third month uh, stay third month uh, three month stay in uh, Corinth. The uh, absence of uh, uh, defense uh, tactics by uh, Paul and the uh, tranquil tone of the epistles suggests that it was written toward the end of his stay in Corinth after the trouble in Corinth had been uh, quieted. Since all navigation on the, uh, uh, on the Mediterranean uh, ceased between the middle of November and the middle of March, you know, because it's winter and high seas and, you know, trouble, uh, hardly had been uh, made uh, before the uh, spring. Thus, it is likely that the uh, date of the Roman epistle was in the spring of uh, A.D. 57, although estimates range uh, from, uh, from uh, 56 through 58. Possible, uh, purpose of the writing. During the decades of uh, 47 through uh, 57, Paul had uh, spent uh, most of his time um, intensely evangelizing the territories which uh, bordered the uh, GNC and planted churches throughout Asia Minor and Greece. Asia Minor is uh, today's Turkey. And look how far they've gone away. They're now, uh, you know, people always wondered, Turkey's one, Israel's one of Israel's best friends. You know, how can they turn on them? And in the last five, the last three years, four years, what have we seen? A complete turning. So when Ezekiel 38 and 39 occurred, to Garma, that's Turkey. All right? And uh, uh, some say uh, Gomer is also, although some say Gomer is really the original name of Germany, so it could be either or. We'll find out when it occurs early in the tribulation period, not the uh, Battle of Armageddon. It's not the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, his uh, Easter campaign was now concluded, uh, but his uh, task was uh, by uh, no means uh, completed. Uh, during the winter of AD 56-57, uh, which is uh, <coughs> spent at uh, the house of his uh, corn, uh Corinthian uh, friend uh, Gaius, <clears throat> uh, he apparently looked uh, toward uh, forward to an uh, immediate journey to Jerusalem, where he hoped to uh, the gift uh, he uh, bore uh, for the uh, Gentile church uh, to the poor Jewish saints at Jerusalem would help uh, 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 would help sa salve, you know, uh, save, yes, the, put, put salve on the wounds uh, of the uh, controversy and uh, strengthen the uh, bonds between the uh, mother church and the uh, churches of the Gentiles. Once uh, this uh, mission was uh, completed, Paul could uh, continue his dream and labor uh, where no man had labored and built uh, where no man had built. Uh, his choice was uh, Spain, um, the oldest Roman colony uh, in the West. But a uh, journey to Spain would afford opportunities uh, to realize another lifelong ambition to visit Rome and spend some time with the believers there. The purpose of his epistle uh, <clears throat> uh, to those uh, Roman believers was to uh, uh, follow, number one, to, uh, to enlist uh, the incorporation and uh, support of the church at Rome for the inaugural of his uh, missionary campaign uh, in the West. Paul uh, realized the uh, strategy and uh, political importance of this uh, city. He needed to assist uh, uh, he needed the assistance of the believers of Rome to launch them into uh, missionary activity in the West uh, as the uh, church at uh, Antioch had uh, done uh, in the East. Uh, notice something. 
uh, at the end, when she just before Jesus rose and, and, and went into heaven, at the end, of, you know, last uh, three verses of uh, Matthew 28, uh, 18, 20, the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. What did the other eleven apostles do? <laughs> they stayed. They stayed in Jerusalem. <clears throat> God had to go get a twelfth to go to do the evangelism that He commanded them to do. <coughs> yes. I, I have a question, and that is. Okay. I'm, I'm surprised you haven't had 15 of them so far. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see, so, see how my other question answer asked or isn't here. Okay. Uh, okay, so Paul was at, quite possibly at the crucifixion. Uh, we don't know if he was there or not. He persecuted the Jews. That's when he was Saul. Remember that? Yeah. He held the garments of those who stoned Stephen. And then he was on his way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 when Jesus blinded him physically so he could see spiritually. Okay. You know, who are you? And he says, who are you, Lord? And he says,